For rigid body planar motion, rotation is limited within the xy plane. Although it looks like rotation is only about a fixed point, point O, in this plane, in reality, rotation occurs about a z-axis that passes through point O and is perpendicular to the xy plane. Therefore, this is known as rotation about a fixed axis. During rotation about a fixed axis, for any point in this rigid body, its path of motion is always circular, with radius being the perpendicular distance from this point to the axis of rotation. We can draw an arbitrary line that is within an arbitrary cross-section which is perpendicular to the axis of rotation. And after some time, it has rotated to a new position. Compared to its original position, it has rotated by an angle theta, and theta is known as the angular position for this rigid body during rotation. And it has the unit of radium, and we know that for an angle, the unit of radium is dimensionless. And the time derivative of angular position is angular velocity omega, which equals to d theta dt, and it has the unit of radian per second. And angular acceleration alpha is defined as the time derivative of angular velocity d omega over dt, or the second time derivative of angular position theta. It has a unit of radian per second squared. Now, if we cancel out dt from these two equations, again, we get the third kinematic equation that alpha d theta equals to omega d omega. And these should look very familiar to you. Since, as you recall, we learned about the three basic kinematic equations for linear motion a long time ago, and now we have learned the three basic kinematic equations for angular motion, which have very similar format as linear motion. And similarly, just like we have these three equations that apply to linear motion with constant acceleration AC, we can also derive these three equations that apply to angular motion with constant angular acceleration alpha C. For rigid body planar motion, once again, since rotation is limited within the xy plane, therefore, as Cartesian vectors, Angular position, angular velocity, and angular acceleration all have component of k, which is the unit vector of the z-axis that is perpendicular to the xy plane. And similar to the sign convention of moment, positive angular motion indicates counterclockwise rotation, and negative motion indicates clockwise rotation. If you recall, a particle is an idealized concept of an object with no size or shape. Therefore, a particle can never rotate. Therefore, during the rotation of the rigid body, all particles in this rigid body undergo curvy linear motion. And we already mentioned they follow a circular path. Therefore, when the rigid body is undergoing rotation, the rigid body itself has angular velocity and angular acceleration, but the particles in the rigid body have linear velocity and linear acceleration. And of course, this is limited to particles that are not on the axis of rotation, since particles that are on the axis of rotation will have no motion. Now let's look at the linear motion of one particle in this rigid body. When the rigid body undergoes rotation about a fixed axis, an axis that passes through point O and is perpendicular to the xy plane, a point P on this rigid body undergoes curvy linear motion following a circular path. The position of point P measured from the fixed axis is position vector r. And its linear velocity, as we learned before, is always tangent to the path. And the speed, scalar v, equals to ds dt. And since s is the length of the arc, which equals to r times theta, r here is 
the perpendicular distance of point P from this fixed axis, and theta is the angular position of this rigid body. And therefore, V equals to R times d theta dt, and d theta dt is the angular velocity omega of this rigid body. In vector formulation, the linear velocity of point P as a vector equals to the cross product of angular velocity of the rigid body as a vector, don't forget it has a component of k, cross the position vector of point P. The linear acceleration of point P, A by definition equals to dv dt. And since we just derived that the linear velocity v as a vector equals to the cross product of omega and r, therefore the linear acceleration a equals to d omega dt cross r plus omega cross dr dt by applying the product rule from calculus. And this term right here is the definition of angular acceleration alpha of this rigid body. And also this term right here is once again the linear velocity and it equals to omega cross r. Therefore, a becomes this after simplification, becomes the cross product of alpha and r minus omega squared r. This term right here has the same sense of direction as the linear velocity. Therefore, it is the tangential acceleration as we learned about before. And this term right here has the opposite direction as the position vector r. Therefore, it points to the normal direction, and it is the normal acceleration component. And this agrees with what we've learned before about curvilinear motion, that the linear acceleration has two components, one along the tangential direction and the other along the normal direction. In scalar format, at, the tangential acceleration equals to alpha times r, alpha being the angular acceleration of the rigid body, and r is the perpendicular distance from point P to the fixed axis. And this indeed equals to dv dt, v being the linear velocity of point P. And the normal acceleration equals to omega squared times r, omega is the angular velocity of the rigid body, and this also equals to v squared over r that we learned before. Let's look at this example. We have a system made up of a motor and a wheel. The wheel has its center pinned at uh, the floor, therefore the wheel and the motor will both be rotating about a fixed axis. And if the system starts from rest and the motor starts to rotate with a constant angular acceleration of 2 radian per second squared, we need to determine how much the weight W has been lifted after the motor has turned one full revolution. And we assume that the belt connecting the motor and the wheel, as well as the rope connecting the wheel and the weight, they don't slip. In this problem, the motor and the wheel are both rotating about their respective fixed axis. Their angular velocities are omega a and omega b respectively, and their angular accelerations are alpha a and alpha b respectively. And since alpha a is given as a constant 2 radian per second squared, therefore by applying this equation for constant angular acceleration, we can determine that the angular velocity of the motor omega a equals to 2t, t being time in second. Now, since the belt is continuous and it doesn't slip, therefore for any point on this belt, let's say point P1, it should have the same linear velocity as any other points on this belt. Therefore, it should have the same linear velocity as a point on this motor, and its velocity can be determined through this equation, omega a times r a, r a being the radius of the motor, 0.15 meter. But at the same time, this point should have the same linear velocity as any point on the wheel as well. Therefore, its velocity can be determined through omega b times r b. From this equation, we can determine omega b to be r a over r b times omega a to be as a function of time, 0 0.6 times t. Now, for the rope wrapped around the inner wheel connected to the weight w, a point p2 on this rope 
should have the linear velocity determined through this equation omega b times rw. rw is the radius of the inner wheel 0.3 meter. Therefore, as a function of time, vp2 equals to 0.18 times t. Now, this is the linear velocity of the weight as well. From here, we take the time derivative, we can get the linear acceleration of the weight, which is a constant 0.18 meter per second squared. Since we have this constant linear acceleration, if we know the time, we can determine the displacement of this weight. Now, since the motor has turned one revolution, and we know that one revolution is one times two pi, which equals to 6.28 radium, by applying this equation once again for constant angular acceleration, we can solve for t to be 2.51 second. Therefore, applying this equation again to determine the linear displacement, again, for constant linear acceleration, substitute in constant acceleration 0.18 meter per second squared, we can get the displacement of the weight to be 0.565 meter. And that solves this problem. Let's look at this example, which is similar as the previous one. Now we need to determine the magnitude of the linear acceleration of point P on this wheel after the motor has turned one revolution. The first part of this example is the same as the previous one. Therefore, we can directly write down that after one revolution, the time is 2.51 seconds, and also the angular velocity omega b of this wheel is a function of time, 0.6 times t. Therefore, the angular acceleration of this wheel is the time derivative of the angular velocity. Therefore, it is 0.6 radian per second squared it is a constant. To determine the linear acceleration of point P, we recognize that it has two components, a tangential acceleration as well as a normal acceleration. And we can evaluate these two components separately. The tangential acceleration AT equals to the angular acceleration of this wheel, alpha B, times the radius, which is 0.5 meter. Therefore, at this point, it is 0.3 meter per second squared. The normal acceleration AN equals to the angular velocity omega b squared times also the radius 0.5 meter. Therefore, at this point, it is 1.13 meter per second squared. Therefore, following the Pythagorean theorem, we can determine the magnitude of the resultant acceleration to be 1.17 meter per second squared. And although we're not asked to do so in this problem, if we wish to, we can determine the direction of this linear acceleration as well.